land, then somebody had to bring it to the market, the truck driver, the person who needed it, the person who turned it into a loaf. There are so many hands and beautiful things in that bread before it comes to the table of the Lord. Now, I do believe when we pray over it as priests and in the community, it's not just the priest's prayer. It's all of our prayer. Something else happens. Something deep. So we're going to talk today about the sacramental imagination and the sacramental principle. And if you have a pen or a paper, I want you to write this down. If there's anything, actually, you don't need a, I'm going to hand it out to you, so... Just listen. <laughs> the sacramental principle is this. What is always and everywhere true must be noticed, accepted, and celebrated somewhere, sometime. What is always and everywhere true must be noticed, accepted, celebrated somewhere and sometime. Can you repeat that? Yeah. What is always and everywhere true must be noticed, accepted, and celebrated Somewhere, sometime. Is John Thorne around the corner? Do you guys know if I can play a video here? Is there a uh, high clock? Tell me if you can hear it okay. This is very important. So the definition I gave you comes from a, a professor named Father Michael Himes at Boston College. He's a diocesan priest. And he's the one that gave that definition, so it's not mine. to be immortal. I personally don't think that's what Christianity is about at all. I think what Christianity is saying is, yes, indeed, we are held in being. We don't die. But the reason we don't die is not because there's something in me that can't die that we call the soul. 
It's because God is so wildly in love with Michael Hines that God won't face eternity without me. <laughs> that God loves all God's creatures so totally that God holds those creatures in being. But it's God's active love that holds us in being, not some ingredient in me. It's not that I've got an immortal soul, it's that God's got an immortal love. And that love is directed toward me and you and everything that exists. That is absolutely fundamental to the whole of the Christian tradition. And it leads me vitally to what I'm about to say to you about sacraments. This is what I like to refer to as the sacramental principle. It's been defined in a number, in a number of ways over the course of centuries. This is my handy dandy definition of the sacramental principle for purposes of see people refer to it as the truth. The sacramental principle holds that what is always and everywhere true <coughs> must be noticed, accepted, and celebrated somewhere, sometime. That's the sacramental principle. If something is always and everywhere true, if there's something that's always the case, it will be ignored. Think of the things that are most that are always present to us and how easily we ignore them. Think of, for example, your heart beating. You don't pay attention to your heart beating most of the time. It's only if something goes wrong and your heart starts beating irregularly that you may notice it. Otherwise, we just take it for granted. Think about blinking. Since I've started talking, you've all been sitting there blinking. I hope you haven't been counting the blinks, but this has been perfectly naturally dull. Uh, but you don't notice the blinks unless something calls our attention to it a few years ago. No, it is. No, now, I was struck by a pound of bells and palsy, and everything on the left side of my face froze, including the ability to blink. I had to take my eyes shut at night, and the course of the day I had to remember periodically to reach up and hold the lid down, the eye, eyeball voice. Uh, you don't, I mean, it's a terrible affliction for theologians who, by definition, speak out of the sides of their mouths. They bet that I can always speak out of one. You don't think about blinking until something calls your attention to it. You don't pay any attention to the oxygen in a room until the oxygen gets to be stale. That which is always and everywhere present <coughs> is easily ignored. If we're going to really attend to something that is always and everywhere present, it needs to be celebrated and noticed somewhere, sometime. Think, for example, of celebrating someone's birthday. I think the mic just went on. It's a shame because the first part of the talk was the meaning of life, and you've all missed it. The second half of the talk. Uh, think of celebrating someone's birthday. We say to them on their birthday that we love them, that we care about them, that they mean a great deal to us. That's certainly not because the other 364 days of the year we couldn't care less about them, <laughs> but on this one day of the year we really care about them. The point is it's because we always care about you that sometime we have to let you know that. We have to tell you it. We have to pay attention to the fact. But well, that's, that's the principle of sacramentality. What is always and everywhere true must be noticed, accepted, and celebrated somewhere, sometime. And you notice what I've suggested to you so far, that the, that which is always and everywhere true, constantly, what is always present, everywhere present, what we can never get away from, is the absolute self-gift of God, is God's love. Which means that God's love can easily be overlooked, unless, somewhere, sometime, notice it, accept it, and celebrate it. Those occasions that get us to notice, accept, and celebrate the love of God which is always present in our lives. Any person, place, thing, or event, any sight, sound, taste, touch, or smell that causes you to notice, say yes to, accept, embrace, and celebrate the love of God, that's what we mean by a sacrament. How many Everybody get that? Yeah. 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 So we have to celebrate that which is ordinary, that which is beautiful. And sometimes we forget our very own selves are ordinary and beautiful. And we come together on Sundays to celebrate all of that, that we're all made in the image and likeness of God, that Christ laid down his life for his friends. 
that we have a community. Sometimes we forget we have a community. And we need to take time out of our lives to celebrate it. That means they're sacraments. And it's celebrating when God's love penetrates into the world, into our lives. So if this bread is already holy before it comes to the table, if every day is holy, if God's always trying to penetrate into the world to tell us we love him and we need to celebrate it, how many sacraments are there? Absolutely. <laughs> there are seven communal sacraments in the church. And they just highlight and celebrate and notice and accept that which needs to be celebrated somewhere, sometime. There are infinite amount of sacraments. Sacraments are there, therefore? How many things exist in the universe? Anything and everything can be a, can be a sacrament. There are the seven great communal sacraments, to be sure, but there will be the great communal instances of something much, much more embracing. Everything that we encounter can be a sacrament. Amen. Any questions? Comments? Okay. Okay, I was uh, watching uh, 